Hi, this is Mark from ITCU Solutions, and today I just wanted to go over uh, how to do a virtual IP on a FortiGate firewall. Um, a lot of pe lot, some of my clients are a little confused, and I think the problem is we're all older Cisco guys, and a lot of it just the name confuses people. They don't actually quite understand what's going on because Fortinet calls it a virtual IP instead of calling it something like dynamic NAT or one-to-one -one NAT. So we'll go over how to do this and also explain why FortiGate calls it a VIP. So I'm going to get kick over to my firewall in a second. But the first thing I just want to point out is that we're going to go from a workstation basically through the Internet Cloud. It's in the lab, but it's effectively going through the Internet Cloud to the WAN interface on the FortiGate uh, firewall itself. It's a 60F and we're going to map that address the uh, VIP we create, the 10.8.8.3, directly to the server to 10.9.9.10. This is what we're going to do the first time. And then on the second thing, we'll go through port address translation. But I want to go over this first because I want to point out exactly why they call this a virtual IP. So I'm going to go over to the firewall now. And the first thing you'll see is I'm going to go up to my network first off actually and I'm going to go to my interfaces on network and then I'm going to go to my WAN 1 interface which is where the traffic is going to come in and I'm going to edit this because I just want to show what's going on. So right now this interface is 10.8.8.1 and you can see we have no secondary IP addresses. I just wanted to point that out because what we're going to do in our case is I'm going to cancel this real quick and go from this screen over to my policy and objects and we're going to create the VIP right here and so I'm going to create new virtual IP and I'm just going to call this test server or something along those lines okay and we're just going to do a static NAT in this case. We're not going to do a fully qualified domain because this, I just want to go over simply how this works. We're going to do this on, we're going to create the VIP on the WAN interface. So I'm going to click on my interface up here and go down to WAN 1. And so I'm going to create an IP called 10.8.8.3 as you saw in the diagram. Okay, what we just did here is we're actually creating effectively a secondary or a virtual IP address on our WAN 1 interface. Now at the same time, and I think this is what confuses people because you're also performing a NAT. So I'm going to click here on my starting IP and put in the IP address of the server, which is 10.9.9.10 from, from our diagram. And I am just going to say one thing. Uh, before you do this, make sure you do not do this with your management interface on your firewall. So as you saw when we were in the network settings, the IP address of the WAN 1 interface is 10.8.8.1. If I put that in there and I map this to 10.9.9.10, I would no longer be able to access this web interface because I would no longer be connecting directly to the firewall. It would, it would be connecting me back to the server, so I wouldn't be able to ping it. I wouldn't be able to do anything. And so what we're doing in this case is we're natting these together after we create that VIP on the outside. So I'm just going to click OK. And I'm going to go back to my diagram real quick. And you can see the 10. Dot, I'm going to point up here. We just created this 10.8.8.3 VIP and we're connecting it directly to the 10.9.9.10 server with a one-to-one -one NAT effectively. So I'm going to go back to the firewall. So that's already done. Now, if I click on my command prompt here, I just want to show you something. I'm going to try to ping um, the, the 10.8.3 virtual IP I just created. And I'll hit enter here. And you'll see I can't connect anything yet. And I'm not doing port address translation so I ping should work anything that goes to that server should work the reason when, even on that VIP has been created the reason it's not working is because you also have to add a firewall policy so I'm gonna go back over to my server I mean excuse me to my firewall 
and then I'm going to go back to my firewall policy. And you can see we don't have a firewall policy between the uh, outside WAN interface and the DMZ. So I'm going to create that. I'm going to create new. Okay, and I'm going to just call this test policy or something. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's good enough. And so we're going to go to WAN 1. So I, what matters here is I'm going from WAN 1, and my outgoing interface is going to be my DMZ, because this is where we're translating between. And then the source, I'm just going to do any. Use it pops up or all. So I'm going to click all. And for destination, I'm going to just select that. Uh, I think I have it here called test server. Let's see. Yep. Test server. And you got to grab that. That's what you called your VIP. So that includes your translation. And then for a service, I'm going to click on service here. Um, we'll just do all for now because I want to show you that everything will basically work on this. Click close. Now, in reality, you probably would select, like if this was a web server, you would probably restrict the service here and you just change that to HTTPS. But I want to go over that all ports will work right now. So I'm just going to click OK. OK. Now, one thing before I go prove that prove this works is I'm going to go back to my virtual IP. OK. And just go over one thing real quick. Go to edit. I could go into my optional filters and restrict this. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to show you if I go over here to, if I hit my up arrow and hit enter, that should work. If I go up to my other tab here and I say reload, boom, I get my website. And if I wanted to, I have RDP running. If I go over here, I should get an RDP connection. So I can click connect. See, it pops right up. I'll just cancel that um, and close that. Now, the reason all that works is because all I've done is just created a one-to-one -one NAT. So every port is lining up. Now, there's two ways. I, I could restrict this in the firewall rules, but just as another example, I just want to show you what the power of the VIP stuff is here. So let me go back to my firewall tab over here. If I go to these optional filters and I click on services, Right, I'm going to click plus here. And let's say we just do HTTPS. Okay. And I close that. And I click OK. All right. So now you see the service is HTTPS. If I go back to my uh, command prompt and I hit the up arrow and hit enter, you'll see it stops working. Because remember, I'm not hitting the 10883 VIP on its own on the firewall. I'm connecting to the server. And what I've done is I've basically added a firewall rule. So I'm just going to minimize this because if I go back to my ITCU solutions page up here, the little website I created out there and hit, I'm just going to refresh that page. <clears throat> I think it's, hopefully it's uh, HPS and not HTTP, but we'll find out here because it might not be working. Because it still should work. Let's go back to our. Uh, go back to our firewall here. Whoops! I don't know why I keep doing that. To the side here. And let's go back to our VIP. Click Edit. And let's add HTTP in there. There we go. Click OK. Okay. And let's go back up to the website. Where we, there, see it popped up, sorry. I was thinking it was HPS, but it's actually just HTTP on port 80. Um, so you can see that works, and you can see that basically works like your firewall rule. Now, I don't necessarily um, recommend doing that. You can also go in, if I go back up to my other tab, I could also go back in here and click edit and I can go to my source address 
And if I change that, if I went plus, if I change that to anything but my workstation I'm on, I'm not going to do this one, I wouldn't be able to get to it because that's whitelisting it. Okay. So I just want to go over this first example. This is one way to, um, I'm going to get rid of these while I'm in here. One way to restrict it like a firewall. And I'm just going to turn these optional filters off. Now, I probably wouldn't use these unless maybe for some reason, maybe you have people RDPing or for some reason you want additional security. Like you don't trust the people. Maybe you got two different people working on the firewall rules as the VIP. And you want to make sure that both rules match up to be enforced or something. But generally, you probably shouldn't be using those optional filters. You should probably handle that in the firewall policy. Because we could have did the same thing in the firewall policies just by hitting the service. But you can see... What we did, we created that VIP on the, um, if we go back to our diagram, we created this VIP, the 10883, and mapped it over to the test server. Now, a lot of you are probably like, okay, that works great. As long as I have additional IPs, I can just map, you know, virtual IP directly to the server. I can restrict which ports I want to it. But let's say for like a lot of us, we're only going to have one uh, primary IP, the 10881. And remember, I just said we don't want to use this guy. Well, if we use port forwarding, we can use that. So the next example I'm going to go over, which is probably this, the most common, is let's go back to our firewall. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my VIP here. I'm going to just hit cancel. Okay. And I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to delete my 1083. Not that it matters, but I'm going to delete it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's being used. In a firewall policy so i'm going to go up to i'll tell you what i'm not going to delete it i'll just change the policy so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up to create new virtual ip and this time i'm going to create uh let's call this um test pf for port forwarding okay and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my interface wan again wan one and I'm going to put in my actual IP of my uh, firewall, which is going to be 10.8.8.1. Okay, now I better be using port forwarding when I did this because otherwise it would translate everything. But since I'm using port forwarding, it's only going to translate this for the specific port. And as, as you can see up here, if I point up here, you can see that my web interface is using 4443. So I can set this to, four, to port 80 and it's not going to make a difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in here port 80 because I think I'm using HTTP instead of HTTPS. Whoops, I meant the number 80 on both of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map directly. I don't know why that's grayed out here. Oh, because I forgot to put this up here to my 10. 9.9.10, which is my server again. And I'm just going to map 80 to 80. Okay. And then all this is doing is it's taking anything that comes to my primary port 10.8.8.1 and it's mapping it to the server on 10.9.9.10. So I'm going to click OK. It's just one to one in this case. And then I need to go change my firewall policy or add a firewall policy. It doesn't matter either way because both of them should be able to operate at the same time. So I'm going to go to my WAN 1 here. And I can either go in and change this guy, which I'm going to just to make sure. Go to edit. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So we don't want to use test server this time. So we're going to kill that for our destination. Instead, we want to use the test PF because this is our port mapping. And in this case, actually running the service, I would still do it, but it shouldn't matter as much because the port forwarding is only going to map over uh, the uh, HTTP. Although you want to put the service in there for HTTP because you know it's also other rules like content filtering and all that stuff uh, would be activated. So we're going to click close there. It's going to check it with the RFC filters. So what we'll do is we'll go into our service and just add this to HTTP. Instead of all, we'll make it HTTP. And click close. 
and just click OK. So all we've done is just create a rule that says, hey, anyone can log into uh, 10881 on port 80 and it should get forward over to the server. So now again, this is a little different. So if we go to our command line, we'll click this, I'll hit my up arrow here and go back one here. And you'll see I should still be able to ping it. But in this case, I'm actually hitting the firewall, right? I'm still hitting the firewall, so that still functions. The uh, web interface on the firewall should still function because it's on 443. If I was SSHing, it would still function because I'm only using port forwarding. But if I go up to my ITCU Solutions website now, if I change that from 10883 to 10881, it should still work. Whoops, it's wanting to pull up the, uh, I'll get rid of that stuff up there. Go all the way back here. Whoops. It's probably going to pop it up again on me. So I'll hit the backspace. Oop. Okay. And you can see it pops right up because it still works and it's going right to the main interface on the firewall. But this time it's only mapping that directly so I can use my primary interface. Again, do not use your primary interface unless you're using port forwarding. So I'll kick back on my Visio diagram here. So this time we're not using a VIP. And I think, again, this is what's kind of confusing is I'm using the, even though I do this under the virtual IP, I'm not really using a virtual IP. So the Naming convention here is a little weird because I'm actually going to 10881, which is an IP that already existed. And it's just like if I had a secondary IP on there already of 10884 or three or whatever it is, I could also still utilize that. It can use a real IP or a virtual IP, but the reason Fortinet's calling it virtual IP is because of that first example. When I add it in there, if the IP isn't there, it will add a virtual IP for me and map it to the uh, through NAT, through basically a one-to-one -one static NAT. The last thing I want to go over, if I go back to my um, firewall, and I'm just going to mention one thing, if I go back to my firewall, is when you do the port forwarding, I'm going to go to my virtual IP, and this should go over basically most of why you would ever use this. If I go to my test PF, since I'm using port forwarding, and I click that, and I go up to edit, You'll notice it has one-to-one -one and then many-to-one. You know, obviously one-to-one -one if I'm mapping TCP, UDP, SP. If you want to do something like many-to-many, -many, um, let's say you have a web server and you want it to map 80 and 443, you can put those um, service ports in there. So it will literally, or maybe you want to use 8088 or a bunch of other ports with it. You can go many-to-many -many and you just list out uh, what ports you want to use and they'll just go in order so if you have 80 to 80 or if you have 80 to 443 or whatever you're doing and the nice thing about this is um, if you wanted to you could utilize this is sort of a i suppose sort of a, a load balancing type thing um, you know if you wanted to map mini to mini like if i click on the mini to mini You know, see how you have mapped IPv4 port uh, 88. So I think you could use this as kind of a poor man's load balancing across multiple ports if you want to do that well as well, or possibly maybe even a, across multiple servers if you set it up correctly. But I just want to go over everything you can use and make sure you understand why Fortinet calls this a virtual IP. Because again, I think the that name can be confusing to lots of people that use, you know, Cisco products or HPE products or whatever they're doing. Um, because it's really in the end, it's mostly a static NAT with the ability to add virtual IPs and to do port forwarding kind of all built into one. And I'm hoping this was helpful and it clears things up because like I do know I have some clients that get confused by this all the time. So I hope this was helpful. If anyone has any questions, please throw them in the comments below. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but this is how I've always done it, and this is my understanding of how it works. And I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you very much.